What's up, everyone, and welcome back to Scourge of War, Waterloo, and we have reached our 20th episode, uh, and in this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the uh, one of the final division scenarios in the game here. We're going to be looking at General Bayonet, and um, these final two division scenarios are both going to be dealing with the final phase of the Battle of Waterloo, which of course was uh, Napoleon's uh, final attack on Wellington Center with the Imperial Guard in his last desperate gamble to break the Allied Center and win the battle. Um, so the scenario is 45 minutes long, which is a little long for this scenario. It doesn't need to be this long. It could have been 30 minutes and we still would have been able to uh, do what we had to do and we're going to be commanding the third netherlands uh, infantry division um, the time starts at 7 45 and it goes to 8 30 <clears throat> and the situation is your old friend napoleon has mounted a bold assault on the allied center although the enemy appears to be outnumbered it has been reported they are the elite troops of the Imperial Guard. Our British and German forces are starting to crumble on the front, and many of the guns have withdrawn to the rear. The chance to prove your true allegiance to the Allied cause is now. Mission, repulse the enemy attack. So pretty straightforward. And uh, as we scroll down a little bit here, uh, we'll see the forces we have under our command. We have uh, two brigades. We have uh, Detmers and Aubrey. And we have an eight-gun artillery battery. And this is all part of uh, Chase's division. Uh, so two brigades, uh, one in column by division, one in square, which we will switch to column by division, and uh, an eight-gun battery. Now, this scenario is uh, really easy. Uh, we don't even really need to move. We just need to kind of bring the guns forward uh, and kind of screen them with skirmishers. And pretty much our artillery is going to gain us all our points. Um, there's no objective in this scenario. You have to score all your points by combat, uh, but you only need to reach uh, 500 points. Um, and so it even says right here, there are no objective locations in the scenario. All points must be scored by combat. These are the forces we have under our command. As I said, it's Chase's division. We have two infantry brigades and uh, one artillery battery. And uh, we need to get to 500 points for a major victory. And that's really not hard to do. We're just going to kind of put our guns out front and let them rack up our points. This is not a hard scenario at all. So we're launching the scenario here. And it just takes a minute because there are quite a few forces that it, uh, it needs to put on the screen. We briefly covered the situation in episode nine, uh, Lagarde Recule at a brigade level where we commanded uh, Maitland's brigade. And they're present here, but we don't command them. We are commanding the, uh, the Netherlands division here. Okay. Let me lower the volume here, that's a little loud. That should be good. Alrighty. So as you can see, we start, let me pause this real quick, and it says, Chase, bring your battalions to the front line at once and repulse the enemy attack. Order your horse battery to a suitable position to inflict maximum damage. We must stop the guards from splitting this army in two. And that's from Wellington. It also says all of your officers are on take charge from the AI, which just means that our two brigade commanders are on take charge and the gun uh, the artillery batteries officer is on take charge, and that's fine. Um, okay, so you can even see uh, that they're kind of hinting at you that you want to use your artillery. Uh, order your horse battery to a suitable uh, position to inflict maximum damage. So it's almost like that's almost like a hint. Like the key is the key to this scenario is to bring your artillery forward and kind of let them do most of the work. Let's run the video forward again, and um, you can see out in front there the Imperial Guard is uh, advancing. Some of the units are in square, but other ones are advancing. A lot of these forward guns are withdrawing. And we do have some infantry units in front of us, but they are going to quickly give way. But they will hold on long enough for us to get our guns up front. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab Bitchin's, Bitchin's artillery battery and uh, bring it forward. And you really kind of want to position the officer kind of right in front of your um, 
of your infantry line. You can see I just put the officer right there. And that kind of keeps the guns out of the canister range of these gun, French guns up here, because we're kind of below the ridge, below the crest of the ridge here. So it's kind of a, by using where the, um, the infantry is set up and placing your officer kind of right in front of them, it kind of gives your guns the right spot to be in. And then the other thing we're going to do, as you can see, some of these forward, uh, some of our forward allied units here are already beginning to give way. So what we're going to do is just kind of bring some skirmishers forward, just kind of start screening our forces. When the battery comes up, we'll move them up in front of the battery and screen the battery. And it doesn't take us long to get set up here. Um, and then once we do, we're pretty much going to let our artillery kind of to do most of the work. Um, our main infantry battalions are pretty much going to sit here. We're not really going to use them. Uh, it's like I said, this is a pretty simple scenario. Uh, you can see some of our allied guns over there are already pounding the uh, Imperial Guard squares on the right there with uh, canister fire. And our units are set up in square. Uh, one of our, our brigade on the right. For no reason, really. There's no French cavalry nearby, so there's really no reason to keep them in square. So we're just going to put them in column by division and uh, kind of line them up with, uh, with the uh, brigade on our left here. And uh, they're just going to sit there. Honestly, they really, they really don't get involved. Really, this is just about our artillery. We're just going to set up our artillery, and they're going to rack up most of the points. So you can see our forward lines giving way, uh, and uh, we're going to run our skirmishers out in front of the artillery. And the reason we do this is to screen the guns so that the French infantry cannot target uh, our artillerymen and start killing the men actually manning the guns. The reason we don't want that to happen is because it doesn't take much uh, for our artillery guns to start running away when they start taking losses. So. It's not necessarily that it's, uh, you know, we mind if our skirmishers take some losses. Um, w w what they're really up there for is to screen the artillery so that they don't get shot at and run away. Because they're the ones that are going to be dealing the main damage here. We're not really going to be using our infantry. We're going to be, you know, the skirmishers don't inflict super heavy damage. Um, really, our damage is going to be coming from our artillery. You can see they've already scored 34 points. We will lose some men here and there with the skirmishers because they are a little close to the action, um, but not too close. You know, they're not going to get slaughtered or anything. But uh, they will take some losses, but really what we're concerned with is we'd rather them take losses than the artillery because that is where our main damage is coming from. And uh, our infantry is just going to sit here. Honestly, it's tough to use your infantry in this scenario because you are really surrounded by your kind of friendly units all over the place here. And you have no control of them. And most of the time, they just get in the way of anything you're trying to do. And they do so here, too. Numerous times, uh, they, they block my artillery's line of sight. Um, they deploy, you know right down my right down through my division here a couple of times they just they they just do things you don't want them to do and it's very hard to coordinate your own units while they're just your allied friendly units are just making a mess of things so i really never i, I never get my infantry involved because it's just so hard to uh, actually make any meaningful use of them with all your allied units around you doing just crazy stuff that you would never do if you were controlling them. Um, you know, and really what we're trying to do is get points anyway, and the best way is just to use our artillery and try and keep the, f you know, our, our field of fire of our artillery open so that they can rack up a lot of points. And that's pretty much what we're gonna do here. It's, uh, you know, we can see we are already, just there's a square or two out there of uh, the French Imperial Guard here and here, and our guns are just blasting huge holes in them, and that's where we're going to get our points from, really. Um, we're at 185 points already, just from that, just with that battery, and like I said, this is a 45-minute scenario. It's very long uh, for only having to get to 500 points, 
So there's no need to rush it. The points will come, just sit there and let your guns do the work. Um, it's, and, you know, that's pretty much all there is to this scenario. It is very, very easy, this scenario. Most of the stuff on the left, you don't even need to worry about your ally. This, this, this attack was a very desperate attack by Napoleon. Uh, like I said, I've said in other scenarios, uh, he really had no idea what was crammed back here behind this ridge. It was just a ton of troops. Um, so many troops that, like I said, I'm not even going to bother trying to use my infantry because there's just no room to maneuver them. Because we're just surrounded everywhere by, you know, our other friendly troops that it's just like impossible to try and make any meaningful use of them. <clears throat> so they're really just going to sit here and we're going to use them just to spit out skirmishers now and again. And that's pretty much all we're going to use them for. Um, because these our allied troops are just so densely packed together back here that, you know, it's, it's, it's really tough to do any kind of maneuvering. So the plus side of that is there's so many troops back here that it's, it's very unlikely that the French will ever get any kind of meaning, meaningful breakthrough, even on the parts of your line that you're not controlling. You know, we're only controlling, you know, this division kind of right in front of us here. These two brigades right here and this artillery battery. That's it. That's all we have under our command. And, you know, these skirmishers all around here are us, too. Um, and I stuck, I tried to get, yeah, yeah, I stuck a bunch of skirmishers out there, and I just kind of realized that, oh, this is stupid. There's plenty of troops over here um, to, to handle this situation. You know, I'm just going to sit here with the few skirmisher units I have screening the guns, and let the guns just blow these squares to pieces, and we're probably going to get... Uh, you know, 500 points just by doing that. And that's pretty much exactly what happens. <laughs> so, yeah, there's not too much to really say about this scenario. Um, it's, you know, just really, really easy. You don't really have to do much. Just kind of put your guns in front exactly the way I showed you at the beginning. Just place the artillery officer kind of, you know, right in front of the, of your left brigade and then your guns will end up in the right position so that they're able to shoot at the infantry, but they're not close enough to this artillery that the artillery is able to fire canister at them. And then just, yeah, blow these squares to pieces. As you can see, we've already sent one square packing, uh, and now we are bombing away on the second square on the left there. And this is what I was talking about with these friendly units that just make it impossible for you to maneuver because they will just walk through your lines, they'll set up and block your line of fire. It's really annoying uh, the way they do this. You know, you're just really too densely packed back here, which is why I don't try to use my infantry at all um, because, it, you know, they're just, they're just blocked and these allied friendly units just keep getting in the way so I say fine you guys handle the infantry if you want and uh, you know we'll just sit here and you know use our guns we only have to get to 500 points we're already near 400 points 379 you know so our guns are doing a great job here uh, and if I uh, if I didn't mention it before this is also a um, a scenario unlocks uh, in that it, getting a major victory in this scenario will unlock the um, the Lagarde Recul scenario, which is a brigade scenario. We covered that in episode nine. So if you're following the series, when you get to episode nine, you won't yet be able to play that scenario because you first have to play this scenario to unlock that scenario. Uh, so just skip that scenario, keep going on with the series, and then when you get to this one and beat this scenario, then you can go back and play Lagarde Recul, and then go back to episode 9, and you'll see how to beat that scenario. <coughs> Which is also pretty easy.
So as you can see, just a ton of, of troops back here. We have a ton of cavalry. I'm looking for my supply wagon because I know I'm burning through canister really quickly. So I'm going to bring my supply wagon up to uh, refill my artillery case on so that we can uh, keep shooting. And you can see off on the top there, there goes some French running away over there. And uh, the, uh, there's not really too much to uh, kind of commentate on this scenario. Um, because it's really, really easy. Uh, as long as you just bring your guns forward the way I showed you. Um, screen them with uh, skirmishers and, you know, hope to God that your allies don't march in front of the guns and block their line of sight. Um, as you can see, which is somewhat happening over here. But luckily, there's really no targets over here. Uh, most of the fighting is over here, so my guns are kind of all pointed this way at the moment. But these Allied units are so densely packed back here that they just have a tendency of getting in your way. Um, which is why, really, all you're going to use is your artillery and, you know, just screen them with some skirmishing units. And, you know, that'll kind of be the extent of what you can do, because trying to maneuver your infantry when your allies are just stepping all over your toes... Um, it's just so annoying that it's not worth doing. Just park them back here, and they're really just a source of skirmishers. You know, it's okay to put skirmishers in front of your artillery, because as I've said before, skirmishers don't block line of sight for your guns, but they still screen them so that anybody shooting uh, will, hit, will be shooting at the skirmishers and not the artillery. So I'm just bringing my supply wagon up here, and as soon as I get there, I will kind of walk them right behind the uh, the battery there, and as they walk by every caisson, they will refill them. You can see the ammo dropping as the uh, as they pass each uh, as they pass each caisson. And I've taken two guns and put them on take charge, and I'm just going to unlimber them and see if we can start shooting some of these uh, French units over here in the flank. We're certainly close enough to use canister fire, but uh, they're starting to withdraw before I can really unlimber here. Uh, and on top of that, again, some of these stupid friendly units start walking in front of my guns and blocking the line of sight. So, you know, it makes it really difficult to, to uh, you know, try and, and, and do stuff like this. <clears throat> so, yeah, right as these guns are unlimbering, look, here comes this unit that's going to, you know, kind of march right in front and block my line of sight. It's just like, ugh. Stupid friendly units. You know, and I'm, I'm going to try and advance the guns to get them forward of the unit. I don't really know where they're going to deploy, but... <clears throat> you know, really, I'm just trying to... And, and, and look at this. Again, with these friendly units blocking my line of sight, I would have such a clear line of sight on these guys. But I have friendly units. Luckily, this, this unit withdraws so that my artillery can start banging on them. But, you know... That's what you kind of don't want to see happen, is your friendly units that you don't have any control over just walk in front of your guns and block their line of sight. It's like, how stupid can you be? Why would you block your artillery's line of sight? You know, so I'm very happy that that, was, that unit withdrew. I'm going to send a skirmisher unit forward to uh, kind of cover the right side of the battery in case this unit withdraws. But this unit is a guard unit. <coughs> Level 7 veteran troops. They're not likely to, uh, to to fall back. So this stupid line unit has, you know, deployed kind of right astride my artillery, and 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 they keep moving. They keep they won't stay put. They just keep blocking my line of sight. Just really annoying, you know. But uh, my one gun there, just you know, they they got a nice canister shot off there.
I just can't stand that these friendly units are constantly blocking my line of sight. Like, just get the hell out of there. Go do something else. I've got this part of the line. M my territory right here. Look at this. Look at this. Just stop blocking my guns. Get out of there. You know, this is one of the annoying things about the scenario. And this is why I don't use my infantry at all in this scenario. It's just pointless. I'm going to get my toes stepped on, my front blocked. It's, you know, annoying, uh, you know, how in the way these friendly units get. <coughs> you know, I, it, it, I could be blasting this unit to pieces if this unit, this guard unit here, wasn't blocking two of my guns, you know. I mean, these guns here, they're doing some damage. These guys are running now. But, uh, it's the ag that's the only aggravating part of the scenario, is that there's just so many friendly allied units that are not under your control back here, that they just step on your toes, get in your way, block your line of sight, um, and you just kind of have to deal with it, you know. But we're over, we're over 500 points now anyway, just from this battery. Just this gun battery here has put us over 500 points. So I'm bringing those other two guns back now because just the, uh, the French have kind of withdrawn from that area and I'm just sick of getting my, my line of sight blocked and having these allied units kind of just step on my artillery's toes. So as you can see, the French attack has pretty much collapsed on our front. There's still some units over there on the left. I'm not going to bother getting involved with them because it would just be so annoying to try and maneuver my guns over there, or to maneuver some of my troops over there. It would just it would just be a frustrating thing to deal with, with just all this infantry um, kind of back here. And we're pretty much over our 500 points now, anyway. So just, cause just this gun battery, that's not even including anything our skirmishers have done, just this gun battery has got us uh, 532 points. So that, you know, like I said, really all you're going to use is your artillery. That's really all you can use, effectively, because it's just... These, all these allied units back here are just not going to let you use your infantry effectively because they're just going to wander all over the place, crisscrossing your lines, blocking your line of sight, stepping on your toes. Um, and so there's really no reason to try and use any of your infantry. Just, you know, use them to kick out skirmishers as needed. You don't even really need too many skirmishers because all you're really trying to do is screen your one artillery battery. And uh, that's pretty much all there is to this scenario. Like I said, not much, not much to do. Just bring your guns up front, screen them with skirmishers, and uh, they're going to get all your points for you. Yeah, so we got 528 points total. Uh, so the guns actually have scored 532, but we've also taken 91 casualties, and most of that is skirmishers. Um, so that took a few, knocked a few points off. So really, we have 528 points, um, and we'll pick up a little bit more as the scenario goes on. Um, you know, our, our guns will pick up some points here and there. I think we get close to 600 points by the end of the scenario. Um, but uh, this is why I say I think the scenario is a little too long. Because it doesn't take long at all to get the 500 points you need. Um, and once the French attack kind of collapses, which it pretty much has here at this point, it never really picks up any much steam again. A couple of units come forward here and there, but, you know, the attack pretty much peters out, and the scenario just drags on for, like, the last 20 minutes of the scenario, you're just sitting there doing nothing while it gets dark out. Um, you know, so 
we probably could have gotten away with this being a 30 minute scenario and it still would have been, you know, very winnable. You know, as you can see, we've, we're over 500 points and, you know, we're only about 20 minutes into the scenario. <clears throat> so these are the two guard units right here, these, these two British guard units right here that you'll command in Lagarde Recul, which we covered in episode 9, which is uh, Maitland's brigade. So Van Pittis' uh, battery has gotten 148 points. That's pretty good. We're not, they're not uh, under our control. There's another uh, artillery barrier. They've gotten 24 points. This one's gotten 143 points, 100 points. I'm just checking and see. I'm just checking all the battery commanders and seeing, you know, how the rest of the line is doing because well, there's not really much more for me to do at this point. The, the attack is pretty much petered out in front of my area. There's no room for me to maneuver to do anything else because, you know, there's just allied troops surrounding my entire position. So we're just kind of stuck where we are. Um, so yeah, I just kind of look around and see how everybody else is doing. So we're up to 533 points. Like I said, we pick up some points here and there. As, as French units wander into my uh, artillery batteries range, we can pick up a few points here and there. Um, up to 537 now, and it, it'll grow. You know, I think we get up to like 570 something. You know, close to 600 points by the end of the scenario. Um, but most of this now, I mean, pretty much most of what we had to do was pretty much done here. Uh, and uh, we're just gonna sit here now for you know another 20 min 23 minutes basically we're just gonna sit here so that's why I say I think this scenario is just a, a little bit too long I think we could have gotten away with you know 30 minute scenario on this instead of 45 um, you know this this by the time it gets another 10 minutes it's gonna be almost completely dark out and, you know, once it's dark out, there's really no more fighting anyway, because nobody can see anybody. So, you know, there was really no point in tacking another 15 minutes onto the scenario. We could have gotten away with a 30-minute scenario and still, uh, still done the deed, so to speak. And, uh, you can see occasionally another French unit will wander in and try and just shoot it out with some of these units, but there's just, you know, there's just so many huge... British and Dutch and German lines back here that it's just like, you, you, you're not going to stand here with these little units and shoot at that and expect to get it, you know, expect to win. So 547 points. And uh, like I said, it's really not hard to do. Just bring your guns forward and your, your guns are going to get most of the points. It isn't hard for an artillery battery that's firing canister into squares. Uh, to rack up a lot of points, you know, kind of very quickly. And there's the Duke of Wellington. There's some French guns back there by you know, in the field between Lai Hassan and Hugamon over here, but, you know, they, they're, they're too far away to be an, any real threat. And like I said, most, as you can see, most of our units are actually down below the ridge line, so they can't even really be targeted by that artillery. And you can see over by Lai Hassan, some French running away, running away. This attack was a real catastrophe for the French. It was a uh, very desperate move. You know, with the fall of Lai Hassan uh, to the French, kind of shortly before this uh, scenario starts, um, you know, I think it kind of fools Napoleon into thinking that the Allies were in much worse shape than they really were 
because they had lost Lai Hassan, so he naturally thought that the the, uh, the Allied center was crumbling. And in reality, Napoleon, uh, I'm sorry, not Napoleon, Wellington was actually able to bring a lot of troops over from the left, kind of, you know, to the left of Bylance Brigade, you know, the troops that were kind of... Uh, um, defending the far left and the Papalot area of the battlefield and kind of bring them over here because by this point, um, you know, two core of the Prussian army were now on the field and they were they had taken up those uh, positions on the left um, as well as, you know, threatening Napoleon's flank at Plans and Wa. Um, so Wellington was really able to concentrate kind of what was left of his army, um, you know, into a, a really tight, kind of area back here and it ended up being you know that there were a lot more troops back here than Napoleon really really thought there were you know because uh, they were concealed behind the ridge so you really can't see what's behind it until you actually get to kind of get to the crest of it and then you know see what's behind it um, you know so this was this attack did not work out too well Now, the next scenario is um, Napoleon's finale, which is the same attack, but we're going to play as the French, and that is one of the hardest scenarios in the game uh, for this exact reason. We don't have that many troops, and, you know, there's just a ton. It's a ton of Allied troops back here. It's one of the most unbalanced scenarios in the game, um, and even for me, it's still uh, it's a hard one to win because... Being that your force is so inferior in terms of just in terms of sheer numbers, um, it really takes a lot of luck when it comes to combat results and co and and, and um, morale checks and getting units to break. Uh, what you have to do is basically sacrifice Donzalot's division um, by just having them kind of charge headlong into the Allied lines and hoping that they break enough units that they're able to hold on to the ridge long enough to get the Imperial Guard and the guns up onto the ridge. If you can do that, if you can sacrifice Donzalot's division, send them forward, send them crashing into the Allied lines um, so that the Allies, uh, you know, retreat enough that, that you can get the Imperial Guard and the guns up there on the ridge and kind of set up uh, like, kind of like a, the fortress, which, you know, I will cover when we play that scenario. Um, and then have the Imperial Guard be able to hold those objectives long enough to get the number of points. Um, you know, it, it is winnable. Um, but it's it's difficult because you don't always, you don't always get the result you want when you throw Donzalot's division uh, forward. And that's kind of the only way to get the allies off the objective positions is just you kind of have to sacrifice Don's last division just charge them relentlessly and just keep charging until they rout you know and uh, hopefully they can get a foothold on the ridge long enough to get the Imperial Guard and the artillery up there and set up an effective defensive formation on top of the ridge that will be able to resist the allied counterattacks once Don's last division is basically wiped out um, and that's kind of how you have to do it, uh, with, with that scenario, is, uh, you know, Don's Lost Division is kind of like your pawns, where you're going to send them forward and, you know, just slam them into the Allied lines as, as hard and as fast as you can, and just keep pushing them and, and keep charging them, literally until every unit in, in that division breaks and runs, and, uh, as you can see here, uh, Everybody's kind of fallen back there, down back behind the, uh, behind La Hassant. There's a few French guns left up there. We had, uh, we had one unit route. You could see them, uh, back on the road there. The KGL, like Battalion, has routed, as well as a gun battery. They're running away. But, uh, other than that, this attack was repulsed very easily. So, yeah, while this scenario, everything that makes this scenario super easy... Uh, is what makes Napoleon's finale uh, super hard. Uh, and it really comes down to a lot of luck, when, you, especially at the beginning, when you're basically kind of ramming Donzalot's division down the uh, Allied throat. Um, it, 
it's basically a lot of luck in getting the right combat results in terms of you winning your charges and um, you know the allied line actually retreating and you know it is definitely possible to get those good results because um, most of this position is held as by these kind of Dutch Belgian troops and as I've mentioned in other scenarios they're not the highest quality troops I don't have a lot of respect for them um, you know they do uh, tend to break and run so it's it's definitely not impossible the real issue is that there's just so many of them and you just you know you don't have the forces that uh, that um, that Wellington does and the other thing is is when you do finally get the objectives you want to make sure you that if you do push, you know, push forward to capture those objective, objectives, you don't want to push forward so far that you actually activate the Allied cavalry back here. There's a lot of cavalry, uh, and you don't want them to get involved because you know, that just makes things more complicated. I mean, sometimes it actually works out in your favor if they get involved because one of the problems with the Allied position back here is it's just so densely populated that it's actually tough for them to maneuver effectively. So if they bring some cavalry to the front, um, it can be tough for their infantry to be effective because now their cavalry is blocking them. And you can, you know, form square and just shoot all their cavalry up. So it's not always a bad thing if the cavalry gets involved. Um, you know, it's only a bad thing if they have infantry and cavalry uh, that they can bring to bear on you. But like I said, sometimes the density of uh, population back here behind this ridge actually works against the allies. Um, you know, because they have such trouble kind of maneuvering their forces effectively. Because they're just tripping over each other and, uh, you know, standing on each other's toes and blocking each other's lines of sight. Kind of just like what was happening to me here earlier. As you can see, it's starting to get dark out. Our line of sight or our, our distance, or, you know, is decreasing. You can barely see the outline of Lai Hassan there in the distance. You know, so we're not able to see as effectively in front of us as we could during daylight times. And as it gets really, really, really dark out, you won't even be able to see your beak in front of you. So our guns have picked up some more points. We're uh, up to 569 points now. And these fools are going to retreat right back in front of our line of sight. But I don't think they stay there. I think they get out of there. <laughs> As you can see, it is really quieted down now. Not much going on at all. A couple of French units still wander forward on the left there, but uh, we're pretty much done here. So it looks like this unit might be getting out of our way, but wait, what is this brigade doing moving forward here? Okay, this just looks like they're going to park themselves in column kind of right in, right in front of us, but at least they're not blocking our artillery site. Look at this. They're going to form line and cut directly through my whole division. This is the kind of dumb stuff I'm talking about. Uh... You know, with the way the AI handles your, your friendly troops here. Why would you deploy like this? You're going to deploy your whole brigade in line, cutting through my artillery, cutting through my whole division. It's just, it's going to look so stupid, and it's annoying the way the AI does that sometimes. Like, seriously, there's a whole battlefield here. you got to deploy and cut right through my division. There's nowhere else you could possibly go to spread your whole di brigade out like this. Look at this. Where do you see how dumb this looks when it's done? And again, I have no control over this. These are friendly units that, you know, are not under my control. And they're just wandering into my position, and they're going to set themselves up in full battle line. And, you know, at an angle, just 
cu cutting right through my whole division. And it doesn't matter. None of you know. The fighting is all over, you know. But it's just like it looks dumb. There's no reason for them to be deploying like this. It is definitely aggravating uh, that the AI just will kind of just step on your toes and, and, and kind of cut in front of you and cut through you like this. Which, like I said, is why I never, ever use my infantry in this scenario. It's just pointless. The AI is just going to make it futile. So just bring your guns up front and let the guns do all the work. You only need to get 500 points, and there's big French square sitting there. They're ripe targets for your artillery. So that's the easiest thing to do. Just bring your guns up, screen them with skirmishers, and let them do all the work. So these are divisional formations, and I'm just kind of showing you what they are. Uh, you know, triple line Prussia, you know, line with reserves. There was uh, columns and so forth. There's line with artillery in front, which is in the corner there. I'm just basically showing you some of the divisional formations of uh, that you could do with the uh, the allies, because the, <clears throat> they're at the divisional level. They're not always. Um, they're not always the same, like the French divisional formations are somewhat different than the Allies and the Prussians uh, divisional formations. Look at this stupid, ha two, two battalions of this brigade are just deployed in line at an angle just cutting through, cutting through my, uh, my division here. Just annoying. They do eventually get out of there, but it's like, you shouldn't have ever been there to begin with. I mean, just what a dumb way to deploy. So, yeah, we got about 10 minutes left of this scenario here, and like I said, nothing is really going to happen. So, uh, real briefly, I'm just going to talk about what's uh, going to be upcoming uh, in the series over the next uh, two weeks or so. Um, so, the next thing I'm going to do is, uh, the next video will be the uh, the final video in the Grog Toolbar Demystified series, um, where we're going to cover leaders and higher organization um, and controlling uh, bigger bigger organizations, um, brigades, divisions, uh, core. I'll show you how to move uh, units via the command map, um, uh, how to start using the attack stances for leaders, because uh, in bigger uh, scenarios like core or army scenarios, you're not always going to control um, every kind of every single unit the way you've seen me do in most of these scenarios. As they get bigger, um, you know, then when there's more and more units on the map, it's tough to really be able to control everything going on at once. Uh, I do find lots of ways to actually do it, even in, you know, army scenarios. Uh, you know, I, I'm still a very hands-on player, but there are definitely situations where um, you're going to use the AI um, commanding your forces, and you're going to use basically the officer stances um, and the command map to basically giving, give them their orders. Um, and then what I usually do is if I'm playing like a core scenario, I'll, I'll basically give divisions, you know, their broad goals at the beginning of a, a, a scenario where I'll, you know, put the officer on attack stance or all out attack stance or whatever. And, uh, you know, I'll have him off take charge and I'll, you know, use the command map to give him his attack destination. And, you know, once he starts, once he starts getting into action, you know, then I might start getting more hands-on when I see opportunities for charges or, you know, when, uh, you know, when the objective gets captured, I'll take command of, you know, maybe a brigade and a brigade commander to occupy the objective. And, you know, I'll get more hands-on as the attack proceeds, as I need to get involved. Um, but just to get big numbers of troops going, it's real easy to kind of just use the officer stances and, uh, you know, the command map to, you know, move large numbers of troops around the field. And all that stuff I'm going to cover in uh, using in uh, episode four, the final episode of the Grog Toolbar Demystified. And, yeah, we're going to show you how to navigate the order of battle, how to use attack stances, how to um, command uh, all, at all different levels of organization, 
and uh, it'll probably be, you know, the longest of the Grog Toolbar Demystified uh, series videos. Um, it'll probably be close to a three-hour video because there's a lot to cover. I'm basically going to be teaching you kind of the heart and soul of the game uh, using the Grog Toolbar. And, yeah, that will be the next video, and then after that will be the final video of the divisional series of the main Scourge of War series here, which is uh, what we're doing right now is the divisional series, and um, this is the next to last uh, episode right now, and then the next uh, episode of that will be Napoleon's finale, which again covers this attack, but playing as the French, and that will be the final episode of the Division series. Um, and then after that, we're here. I'm just recalling my skirmishers. It's dark out. There's the the battle's over. I'm just I'm just bringing them back. There's no reason for them to be out there anymore. Uh, so that's all I'm doing here is just recalling my skirmishers. And finally, these two stupid lines uh, that are you know we're cutting through my division are getting the hell out of here. And uh, I'm very happy about that, because I just don't like the way that looks. That's just dumb. I have my troops set up all nice and neat, you know, behind my artillery. I wish the AI would deploy its troops as nicely and as neatly as I do. Uh, so anyway, yeah, after, uh, and yeah, so Napoleon's finale will be the final divisional scenario for the main series. And then we will be moving on to core scenarios. And um, I think... Uh, for the first core scenario, I'm actually going to start with the uh, Prussian core scenario from the Ligny expansion, which is uh, Saint Armand, and it basically covers the Prussian first core defense of Saint Armand, Saint, Ar Saint Armand La High, and Wagnerly um, against Van Damme's core uh, uh, from Napoleon's army. And the reason I'm going to do that scenario first for the core. Uh, series is um, I think it's the best introductory core scenario um, because everything is not thrown at you right away you start off with just a handful of battalions um, and you know you're only concerned with uh, Saint Armand uh, you know just a very small area and Van Damme's get attack kind of com comes on in waves. It starts with the Foles division, and then another division comes in, and another division, and the attack kind of pro proliferates northward. And during the course of the scenario, more and more troops get released to you. So you kind of get to grow with the scenario, where you, you start off with just a few battalions, and um, then a few more get released to you, and a few more, and a few more by, you know, an hour and a half into, into the scenario, you have you know, a whole bunch of, uh, of troops, almost almost the whole first corps, uh, released to you. So rather than having the, uh, you know, a scenario like, uh, say, Derlon's Assault, uh, where, you know, the whole corps is available to you kind of right out of the gate and you have to, you know, get them all going at once, uh, I, I feel that uh, the Prussian scenario uh, for the Ligny expansion, St. Arnold, St. Armand, uh, it's a better introductory scenario because not all the troops are released to you right away. Um, you know, it's you only start off with like a brigade and it's slowly over time more and more troops get released to you as the battle proliferates northward from St. Armand to St. Armand La High and, and eventually up to Wagnerly. Um, you know, so as you play it, you, you know, you'll get to kind of grow with the scenario as more and more troops get released to you but you're not over it's not an overwhelming amount of troops at the beginning um and uh that's why yeah that's why i think uh that will be the best introductory scenario and it also uh gives me a chance to show you guys a lot of really cool bs you know game really gamey stuff that i've uh discovered that you will start to see me use with uh with core scenarios, um, and, and especially stuff in terms of uh, using skirmishers, and uh, you know, I've talked 
relentlessly about how awesome skirmishes are, but you're going to really start to see some of the crazy BS you can do with skirmishes when it comes to engaging artillery and turning them around and before they've had a chance to unlimber. Just some really cool stuff that I'm going to show you guys uh, when we get to core scenarios. So as you can see, it is really dark here now. You cannot see your beak in front of you. Um, we got 30 seconds left of the scenario. We got 572 points. Uh, so we got our major victory. And uh, that pretty much wraps up this scenario. Like I said, this scenario could have been uh, 15 minutes shorter, and uh, <coughs> it would have been just fine. Uh, we still would have, uh, you know, accomplished our mission. Nevertheless, it is cool getting to see it go from, you know, light to, you know, super dark out. Um, and uh, all the fighting is done at this point. The French have all run away. Back to Paris. And there we go. We got our... Uh, our major victory, 573 points. We lost 90 men. Uh, you know, no, no big deal. Most of our uh, most of our ca uh, casualties came from artillery. And I hit the wrong button there. That's why I, uh, I think I hit return to battle when I actually meant to uh, close Napoleon here and open uh, Wellington. And uh, yes, we are uh, part of the uh, Orange of Nassau, I believe. Yes. Yeah, there we go. And we are, yep, Henry Chase's division down. There we go. And yeah, there's our score. 572 points. 91 casualties. So that's it. We got our major victory, and uh, that's pretty much all... Uh, all for this video, guys. I know this one wasn't an exciting one. They, not, they aren't all... Uh, they aren't all exciting, but, um, you know... I have to cover each and every one of them. Um, so some of them are going to be, uh, you know, less exciting and some of them are going to be more exciting. I do promise that the next one, Napoleon's Finality, m will be very exciting from start to finish. Uh, that's an hour long scenario, but as I said, uh, it's probably the most, um, if not the most difficult scenario in the game, which I personally think it, it is. Um, I, I, I certainly think it's the most unbalanced scenario in the game in terms of the amount of forces you have under your command versus you just saw what is back there behind that ridge, you know, and the, really the only way to do it is to just sacrifice Don Zalot's division, bash them headlong into the allied lines and, you know, hope they clear the way enough to get for the Imperial Guard to get up on the ridge with their artillery. You need to bring the guns up because that's how you're going to hold the position. Um, you know, the Imperial Guard, as I said, their troop quality is extremely high. They will hold for a long time. You really have to shoot them to pieces, um, you know, to, to, to make them break and run. Um, but not only do we want to get up there and, you know, get the objectives, but we also want to be able to set up a defensible position where we're not just going to get shot to pieces, you know. Um, you know, and that's why we got to get our guns up there. Very important to get our guns up there because that's how we'll be able to hold the position and really discourage the allies from trying to... Um, you know, mount, be able to get a, put a serious counterattack together, you know, by really hitting them hard with artillery. So, yeah, that's the key to that scenario, if we can get it done, uh, is to uh, use Don Zalot's division to, you know, just charge until you, you cannot charge anymore. Just, you know, you, you know, you're just trying to get the allies to back off, to just get off the ridge retreat so that we can get up there, occupy the objective, and... Uh, get the guard up there, bring our guns up there and, uh, you know, set up a defensive line that can hold out long enough to uh, rack up enough points to get a major victory. Um, so, like I said, I do consider that to be the most difficult scenario in the game because just of how unbalanced it is. Um, you don't, as we go forward, you're not going to encounter that as that kind of unbalance as much um, because it's just, as you go into core and army scenarios, you just have kind of more of everything at your disposal you know you don't have just kind of that select group of troops that you see in brigade and division scenarios and you just kind of have to be able to do it with the troops at hand um when i play core and army scenarios it just feels like i always have more options um more troops more artillery more infantry more cavalry just kind of more of everything at my disposal so even scenarios that could be called more complicated 
like uh, like army scenarios um, in terms of just you're handling much larger numbers of troops. I don't always consider them more difficult than I would say Napoleon's finale, which um, it's just while it's not a huge number of troops, although for a division size scenario, it is pretty big. Um, uh, I, I do consider it to be difficult just because of the sheer disparity in numbers between the, the opposing sides there. Um, so yeah, so the next video will be the, uh, the final video of the Grog Toolbar Demystified. Uh, like I said, set aside a lot of time for that one. It's probably going to be close to three hours long. And then after that will be Napoleon's finale, the final division uh, video, and then we will move into core, um, into the core series where we'll start covering the core scenarios. And uh, those videos will start getting longer. It's not unusual to see one and two hour uh, scenarios uh, for core scenarios. Some are even longer. Um, the full battle of Katra Bra is considered a core scenario, and that's like uh, four hours long and you know obviously you can play that battle as the French and as the Allies so and each one of them is four hours long um, or three and a half hours I forget the exact length um, but yeah so some of these videos may even be two two parters when we start getting into uh, into core scenarios and some of the army scenarios may be multiple parters uh, because some of them are you know I think Ligny is seven hours long. Uh, I think Waterloo is like nine hours long. Obviously, I no, I can't do that in, in one video. Uh, so those will probably be broken up into uh, multi-part videos. But those are way off, ways off. We still have to get through the whole core series. And um, yeah, I think that just about covers it. Uh, real briefly, I just want to say that uh, when I started this channel, uh, I had zero subscribers. And uh, now, uh, after the 20th episode here, uh, I'm closing in on 50, sub 50 subscribers, and I'm starting to see comments from you guys that you're, um, you know, the series is really ha is helping you guys out and that you're learning a lot. And I just want to say thanks to all you guys who are, um, you know, l uh, liking the series and, and learning from it. And, you know, when you comment that it's helping you out, it really, uh, you know, motivates me to keep going with this because uh obviously i'm not doing this for myself i already know all this stuff um you know i'm doing it because i'm a fan of the game and you know i want to make the game as uh accessible to new players as i possibly can and uh, when a new player that tells me they just bought the game and that this series is helping them that's just kind of everything i kind of wanted to do with this series was um you know, to help you guys uh, crest that learning curve uh, a little more easily because, you know, it does have a steep learning curve when you first get into it. So if I've, if I've done anything to help make that learning curve more easily traversable uh, for you guys, then, um, you know, I've uh, accomplished at least a small part of uh, what it is I set out to do with this series. And um, as always, you know, if you guys have questions, something you don't understand, um, you know, always, you know, go ahead and post your questions in the comments of, of whatever video it is that uh, you have a question pertaining to. And, I, you know, I will absolutely do my best to uh, to answer it for you. Um, so, yeah, I'm just kind of babbling now, I guess. Uh, but that's pretty much it for uh, for this episode. And uh, I will see you guys next time for Napoleon's finale, the final divisional scenario. Take it easy, guys.